Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. Where are we going on episode seven then? Lucky number seven. Yes, yes. Uh, so we're going to the Gochawal Forest. Gochawal Forest. Yeah, it uh, is a forest. I've not heard of this place. Right? I'd never heard of it until I moved here. And uh-huh. even then, it wasn't a while until I figured out what it was. Oh. So uh, there are four distinct Gochawal Forests on the island. And I went to the Hwansang Forest, uh-huh. which is on the, what is this, the western side. Okay. Um, and Hwansang literally means fantasy. Oh, right? wow. So it's like the fantasy forest, kind of mysterious. and Better live up to that yeah, name. Yeah, romantic. <laughs> um, so this one, this particular one, the Hwansang Forest, is more well known than the others, mainly because a lot of K-pop artists have been by. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah they used it for a backdrop for like photos and music videos, and mm-hmm. some K-dramas were filmed, not just at Hwansang, but in Gucciawar uh-huh. Forest in general. Okay. Most notably, I always I always seem to bring them up somehow in some <laughs> way, but <laughs> BTS. It's been a while. I think it was back in 2015, they released their album, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 2. Oh. And some of the photos for their album was taken here. Oh, that's like maybe before they really, really mm-hmm. blew up properly yeah. globally. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So the hardcore BTS fans, we all know what, what that is. <laughs> yeah, that might be like a pilgrimage site for some yes, of the army out yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You said, which has confused me, there yeah. are four Kochawal regions in Jeju. Yeah. So Kochawal Forest is not, I'm guessing, the name of this specific forest. Yes. Oh. Very astute, Peter. Thank you for that. So, well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the Kochawal is um, a type of forest. Uh-huh. So if you come to Jeju, there are, there's forests. There are forests. Obviously, there are forests. There's trees everywhere. Mm-hmm. But the Kochawal, the broadest characterization of what a Kochawal forest is, is its rocky ground. Oh. Yeah. So if we have the image, the first image that I have for you. Yeah. We'll put that on the stream right now. Ah. Oh. Yeah, so that is a vi- uh, an image of the Hwansang Kochawa Forest. So the floor there, that's kind of natural, rocky. It's not like a path that's been laid down. Right, that's all natural because, uh, you know, Jeju is a volcanic island. So mm. all of it, a lot of it is rock. Oh. And at first glance, if you look at it, it just looks like any other forest. Yeah. Lots of wood, lots of green, mm-hmm. you know, but... But it just looks a little bit messier yeah. than other forests. And But if you look closer at the ground, um, obviously you can see the rocks. But you can also see that the roots of the trees are exposed. Yes. Right? So they're above. A lot of it is above the ground, uh, which isn't something that we normally see because you can see it grow yeah, right I was, along. I was wondering whether that's just a t- certain species of tree, but... I guess that's a characteristic of these Kochawa forests is yeah. the roots, a lot of them are above ground. Right, because the ground is so rocky. I do have a close-up of a tree, picture number two. Okay, let's see the next photo here. We'll click on to that just one second. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you take a, you can take a closer look of a tree, all the roots, right, they're, they're all exposed because they can't, they can't get in there. That's the the ground really is just so rocky. Wow, that that looks really odd. It does look like I don't know. Maybe they've been half dug up in a way. Right, right. Wow. It almost looks alien. Yeah, yeah. In a way, I don't, I feel a bit uncomfortable looking yeah. at it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, these. I guess you wouldn't think that, that you could have a forest on rocky ground. Forest you associate with like some kind of mud or mm-hmm. like soily base. That's right. really curious. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the term, the word Kuchawal is a is a word of the Jeju language, Jeju all. Uh-huh. And the official dictionary of the Jeju dialect created by the provincial government here defines Kuchawal as an unmanned and unapproachable forest mixed with trees and bushes. Unapproachable? Yes. That's not going to get too many tourists coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? So, wow. um, so koot means forest and chawal means the thickets or rubble. So you have both. You have trees and thickets and uh-huh. rubble all growing at the same time. And so how did the locals actually call come to call this type of forest koot chawal and what, how did they view it? I have not just an audio, but I have a video Ooh. with audio. So if you're streaming in via video, you can... Fabulous. So you've asked today's interviewee is E Jin Yong. Oh, yes. I forgot to mention. He is a uh, tour guide uh-huh. at the Hansang Kochawa Forest okay. or Park. 
his so we can trust his answer I oh think. yeah he's very knowledgeable <laughs> yes okay yes. let's play the clip i can see his lips moving <laughs> we've got it. here we go So, uh, what he was saying was what I had briefly mentioned before. A forest with a, with a lot of trees, mm-hmm. with mainly trees, was called kot. Okay, just a kot. Just a kot. Uh-huh. And then a forest with a lot of thickets, vines, a lot of rocks was called chawai. Uh-huh. Right? And so the way the locals differentiated was, he was explaining, was that if you slapped a cow on the bottom <laughs> and sent it into the forest and it was yeah. able to roam freely, that forest was considered a goat forest. It's very scientific. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if the cow got stuck or couldn't get through or returned with scratches and bleeding, mm-hmm. it was called chawa, the forest was. Uh-huh. And so it was avoided. Okay. So back in the day when electricity was introduced to Jeju Island um, and firewood was no longer in high demand, mm. the trees in Kochawa were pretty much left alone because up to that time, they used the trees in the Kochawa as th- their firewood. Ah, yeah. So it's kind of overgrown in this natural way. Right. Oh. Right. Okay. So where are we going to go now with our Kochawa adventure? Okay, so I want to stay in the Kochawa, uh-huh. but within the Kochawa, I want to talk about a, a particular tree. Okay. Um, so, as we all know, Jeju Island was created by volcanic activity over thousands of years, so yeah. it's very, very rocky. Mm-hmm. And the rock isn't just, like, just rock. It's volcanic rock. Yeah. Right? So it's very, very hard. And so, obviously, portions of the land were just too hard because it was impenetrable and they couldn't penetrate the ground with traditional oh. farming tools back in the day uh, until modern technology became available. So these areas were mainly left alone. They were okay. un- considered uninhabitable and impossible to cultivate. So mm. it was useless for agriculture. Uh, so it was mostly abandoned, except I mentioned before in the first part, to be used for firework, firewood and lumber trade. Okay, but after that, like, stop, like you said, then there was nothing taken mm. from that land right right mm. right uh it was just it was they just the only reason anybody would go into the kuchawa was to get get wood mm-hmm. yeah either for themselves or to sell okay right and so most of the rest of the 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 forest was left alone to thrive in mm. its natural state okay right so if you were to let's say let's kind of imagine what it may have looked like back in the day mm. if you were to step into the kochawa during that time you just see like a really really messy a lot of mess of greens okay right? a lot of vines mainly bushes plants um and a lot of tree stumps so not too like high in terms of how big the plants would get you'd be cutting down most of those bigger trees right. for their wood right right exactly mm. that's that's kind of how i imagined it to be so when electricity was finally introduced on the island everybody switched over to electricity mm-hmm. and then the trees were pretty much left alone okay and they were allowed to grow mm. right so if you notice most of the trees in the kochawar have multiple trunks. Oh. The guy told me it was about 90% of the trees have multiple trunks. I do... N- not just branches. Not just... Not just... Bran- they are technically branches. Okay. <laughs> right, I almost said branches. <laughs> but uh, why? Why was that? Why? Well, how did that happen? Because the guy told me that it isn't the tree's natural state. Oh. It is a sign of human interference. Okie dokie. Should right. we play the video? Yes, please. Here we go. 육지에 있는 나무들하고 큰 차이 중에 하나가 곧잘의 나무들이요. 네. 몸이 하나가 아니에요. 아. 대부분 우리 나무 그리면 몸을 하나를 그리잖아요. 네. 근데 여기는 나무 몸이 여러 개 있어. 음. 왜 그럴까? 보통 나무들은 잘리면 그루터기라고 이렇게 밑둥이 남지만 네. 
Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Um, if we could just put up the, the image number three, I okay. want to show you exactly what it looks like. Ooh. Yeah, so if you look at the tree, it looks like multiple trees, yeah. right? It looks like a tree or with, you know, just a lot of different trunks growing in all different directions. But if you take a closer look at the root of that tree or that plant, you'll notice that it's a single tree because it has a single set of roots. That's crazy. Yeah. So this particular spe species that Guide was telling us in the video is that if you cut it even at its base, mm. but you leave the root, it's still alive, uh -huh. right? So it's it continues to grow, but not only does it continue to grow, it branches off. Wow. So it creates a separate branch because it wants to live. Yeah. It wants to survive. That's really interesting because yeah. if you cut it, then it seems to then split into yes. two right. right and then it keeps on doing that yeah and you've got like loads here I don't yeah know, maybe like seven or eight different right? offshoots yeah just one two three four just a whole bunch wow yeah That's <laughs> kind of cool. I, I guess people might want to do that deliberately to create these kind of spooky atmosphere forests yeah maybe but back in the day it was just by need it was yeah. necessity they had to and wow. lucky for them it just kept keeps growing into multiples yeah that's quite attractive for photos i'm guessing Thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's really interesting when he said that 사람이 한번 손댄 숲, right? So that means like it's a forest where there's human interference and there's mm. clear signs of it all over the Coachella. Ah. It, when you, whenever you see something like this, you know that it's because uh, somebody was cutting it down. These Coachellas, you, you mentioned they're in four areas. So mm -hmm. do they cover like a lot of Jeju Island, these Coachellas? Because you said but, like a lot of the floor is rocky right right so unfortunately uh, we've lost a lot of it oh and the province has been working has been working toward protecting it because a lot of it was lost to urban development oh, I see. and once it's destroyed it cannot be regenerated oh no it just cannot and there are a variety of endemic plant and, and animal species meaning that they don't exist anywhere else in the world they only exist oh. here Wow. In the Coachella. And a lot of them are endangered and some extinct, extinct because, or seemingly extinct, mm. um, because of urban development and overall misuse. Oh dear. Are they, these like a tourist attraction? Do people go and visit these forests? Yes, yes. So Hansang, the Hansang soup, the soup, <laughs> <laughs> the Hansang forest has just exploded in popularity and the Coachella in general has, is a uh, becoming a little bit more mainstream, I okay. guess. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll have to pay a visit to it next time. I'm Jeju, Je Je not too close to the sea. I assume I can't remember seeing it on any coastal like drives. No, no, stuff. it's kind of like midland, mid-regions, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what are we going to learn about next? So in order for the Kochawa to be called uh, a Kochawa, mm -hmm. right, it has to meet a few requirements. Okay. And one of them we mentioned was the rocky soil. Yeah. And uh, another one is the sumkol. Oh. Literally means breathing hole. Like a whale or a dolphin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, exactly. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have like this thing where water spurts up and everything? Not water, but oh. it's actually wind, even okay. on a whale. It's oh. not actually water, it's just oh. wind or okay. their breath. Yeah. So the Kuchawa is called the lungs of Jeju. Uh -huh. And it, cause it's because they have, not only because they have these sumkors, these breathing holes, mm -hmm. but because it's just a lot of greenery, so they provide yeah. a lot of oxygen. Okay. And so if you go into a Kuchawa, you can see a lot of it, but a lot of it is underground. Mm. Uh, they they kind of look literally like holes sometimes wow. or small caves and then others look like really big divots in uh -huh. the ground some big enough to walk into wow and so air flows through the cracks in the ground and through these holes uh, these breathing holes and which helps to maintain a constant temperature within the Kuchawa all year round <gasps> so all year round it's between 12 and 15 degrees celsius what even in the summer and the winter yes Wow. Yes, which is about 53 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit for Americans like me. <laughs> That's unbelievable because yeah. the summer, you know, Jeju gets to, what, 30 plus degrees. Yeah. And the winter, I've been there when it snowed a lot, but it's still like 12 to 15 in these places. Yes, yes. That's and so, cool. Yeah, I asked him, does it snow then? And he says it absolutely does snow So because it, it's kind of higher up on the mountain, the mountain oh. meaning Halasan. Uh -huh. So if it snows on the mountain, the Kochawa regions will get snow, uh -huh. but the temperature is still pretty mild. 
That's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Okay, those sumkos, though, those windows or breathing holes,、mm-hmm. they sound really interesting. So we're going to hear more about them from the the guide. Yes, the tour guide is going to tell us a little bit more about the sumkos. Let's take it away. 이렇게 용암이 흘러오면서 땅을 갖다 요철 현상으로 웅덩이를 파고 파고 오다 보니까 더 파인 웅덩이 저 아래 온도와 우리가 서 있는 위의 온도가 달라서. 방 한계식물하고 남방 한계식물이 같은 지역 안에 함께 살고 있는 데가 그렇게 그렇게 드물어요. 근데 곧잘은 그게 가능한 거죠. 용암 때문에. 그래서 웅덩이도 많고 여러 식물들이 함께 더불어 살고 있는 숲이 곧잘이에요. 제주에서는 곧잘하면 유명한데 아이유가 선전하는 바로 삼다수죠. 어 맞아요. 네, 왜냐하면 돌밖에 없으니까 빗물이 음. 사라진 거를 꺼내올 수 있잖아요. 그래서 이제 아무 곧자월에서나 삼다수 캐는 건 아니고 제주에서는 더 위에 교래리 쪽에. 음, 음, 아 그게 곧자월 무슨 삼다수가? 네, 네. Yeah, so he was talking about the sumkors, how the lava as it was flowing、uh, created these divots in the ground, which ended up when it hardened created these sumkors, these breathing. Holes, and then he said another thing that the lava flow created were aquifers, underground、oh. aquifers. So that is another characteristic that defines what a kuchawal is. So kuchawal aquifers retain almost half of Jeju's rainfall,、mm-hmm. the highest rate in all of Korea, and there are no rivers or streams because everything gets drained into these aquifers. That's really curious. So they just get all the water gets soaked into the ground into these. Aquifers. Yes, in the Kocha, we do have streams. We don't have like big, full-on rivers.、Mm-hmm. We do have streams that flow down from the mountain into the ocean. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But he was talking about、uh, the Samdasu is Jeju water.、Mm, If, that brand. Pe- yeah. yeah, the brand. So for people who aren't familiar with it,、uh, and it is Kocha water. Technically,、well, did he mention that IU like promotes that or something? Yeah, yeah, her face is all over the island. <laughs> oh, re- I didn't know、yeah. that because it doesn't have like her face on the packaging. At least here in in Seoul, when I buy it from like the supermarket. No, it's not on the packaging, but、oh. it's all over the billboards. Oh,、yeah. really?、Mm-hmm. I see. So that is from like a kochawa or aquifer from a kochawa. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So it's considered one of the cleanest. Uh, water that you can, or natural water that you can find in Korea, because、oh. it's been naturally filtered for. If you when you drink the water, it's about twenty years old, is what they say. What? Yeah. It's been like filtering for twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. Oh, that is really curious.、Uh, we've also got the photo of one of the sumkos here. Oh,、show. that's right. I really wanted to show you guys. So、wow. this is the same sumko. So, if the top of the picture are several people in a line walking、uh-huh. down rocky steps、yeah. into a kind of like a under like a cave or an enclave, yeah, and then the bottom picture is from the top view. Wow! Yeah, it's really cool. And so, yeah, that makes it seem more like a hole rather than a series of like crevices or something、mm-hmm. like that. And they're saying what the wind kind of blows in and then maybe gets trapped in here, and you can feel the temperature difference. Yeah, so、uh, you can't tell from the picture, but there are holes in the rocks.、Oh. So the air flows through、oh. the holes into this area,、oh. and the temperature there is really, really comfortable. Like、yeah. nature's ventilation, almost. Right. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, Jeju Island. I'm sure we've talked about it many times on the show and on this corner. It's very diverse. You、mm-hmm. know, you've got the lovely sandy beaches. Some people call certain areas the Maldives of Korea、mm-hmm. and things like this. But you've also got this proper, like, rugged nature、yeah. that wouldn't look out of place in like Lord of the Rings or a Hobbit, like falling down in one of these yes. sunkos. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. That is brilliant. Thank you so much, yeah, Angel,、sure. as ever, for widening our horizons to do with Jeju Island. What's up in Jeju is supported by JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. Arirang Radio.